So this is the lesson on the E minor scales and chords, followed by the prelude in E minor by Carcassi. And this is from the Volume 2 Method book, um, which you can find a link to in the YouTube info section or on thisisclassicalguitar.com. So first we'll go over the scales and the arpeggios and chords, and then we'll take a look at that prelude by Carcassi, which uses many of those chord shapes. So the two octave E melodic minor scale. In this scale, we're going to use a one finger per fret rule, just meaning that we're not going to use our fourth finger on the third fret on the top strings like we have been in other keys. But instead, because of the accidentals that happen in minor keys, we're going to keep one finger per fret to keep everything organized so that when those sharps come up, our fourth finger will be ready for them. And then on the third fret, we'll use our third finger. So the two octave E melodic minor scale. And the E melodic minor position scale. So position scales just go to the highest note in the position. In this scale, since E is the lowest note in the guitar, we're only going to be adding a couple of extra notes on the first string. And of course, we play position scales because when we read music, we want to be able to read all the notes within the key in a certain area of the guitar. So it's really for our reading comprehension. So you can see with the one finger per fret rule, you can really just let your fingers hover over these frets and then just push the notes when needed. So the E uh, the two octave E minor arpeggio, remember that arpeggios are just broken up chords. In this case, we're going to have to, because of this, of this chord shape here, this E minor chord shape, we're going to have to play this low G with our fourth finger. And that's a common occurrence in repertoire sometimes, so it's a good thing to get used to now. So you can see that's just a big E minor chord, but we're playing the notes one at a time. When you play thumb stroke, repeated thumb stroke, Feel free to use rest stroke. See how I'm just sweeping my finger across those strings? Because when you play down into the next string, you'll be ready for it. And it's a very secure way of playing. The E minor triads, which are just the three note chords broken up into uh, played solidly. Um, root position means the E in the bass. Second inversion is the fifth in the, in the bass, the fifth note of the scale. Um, and then first inversion is the third note of the scale in the bass. So that means E in the bass, and then B in the bass, and then G in the bass, and then back to second inversion. So again, root position, second inversion, first inversion, second inversion. The chord progression in E minor, you can just strum these. Um, these are just common chords in E minor. And then C. B7, E minor. That B7 shape will come up in repertoire a lot, um, everywhere from grade one repertoire to grade four repertoire especially, um, and, and beyond that of course. Um, so whenever you're playing an E minor, uh, the five, seven chord, that's a very common shape for it. So um, you'll want to get used to it. Now the four voice chord progression, it's, just, it's the same chords, but um, only with well, only four voices in each chord, and they progress in a certain way. That sometimes requires a um, different fingering. In this case, the chords are played exactly the same as the strumming example. When you have only four voices, you can choose whether you're going to play the E minor chord in its full form or just with the finger needed. And I would recommend just using the finger that's needed. Um, but you can choose whether you use your second finger there or your third finger. E minor, C, A minor, B7, E minor. You can tell in this example, when I first played it, I used my third finger, but in this example, it's much better to start with your second finger on E minor because it's then you can leave it down for the C chord. 
so it's a better choice. So you always have these choices when certain notes are left out. You don't have to finger the whole chord. You can just use that particular finger that's needed. And in this case, using the second finger means you can leave it down for the next chord. Okay, the prelude in E minor by Carcassi. This is a great um, arpeggio etude or prelude which uses many of those chords we just talked about. There's some other chords in there as well, which we didn't go over, but that's okay. You don't have to know everything at this point. We haven't gone through enough theory for you to know everything, but just recognize some of the shapes that you have played. You can recognize all the E minor shapes and some of the B7 shapes, and that's very useful to you to recognize chord shapes within all these notes. Not much to say about this piece. Um, keep your fingers down within the chord to make sure they ring. Um, there's a small hint of a melody in the top voice here. This kind of... It's not the strongest melody, um, it's really just kind of an arpeggio piece, but you can keep that in mind to bring it out a little bit. Keep in mind that this piece is in 6-8 time, so when you, when you can see, when you um, think about this piece, Try not to think of it in groups of three like this, but instead one, two, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to think of it in the actual time signature, right? Because they sound different. One is da 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 da. The other one is da. So you want the second one. of tempos if you want to go a little faster. So slow or fast doesn't really matter, just make sure you're sustaining all the notes properly and you're able to progress from chord to chord without too much disruption, especially on that nice third line where the bass line is more active, right? You want to make sure that that bass line comes across nice and smoothly. So it's just a really great example of some of the chords um, that we learned previously and the key signature, of course, um, all mixed into a solo piece.